What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Alright, so yeah. What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm going to be going over my one week review on the Oculus Quest version 2. And I'm going to be going over some of my gripes and some things I love, absolutely love about this thing. So now this is kind of like a whether you should buy it or not kind of video, I guess you could say, like helping you decide whether you want to buy it or not. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So right off the bat, what are we gonna focus here? So without, um, so as you can see, I have the Quest version two right here in my hands and it's a lot smaller, a lot lighter. But that does not do justice for the strap. This strap, I hate it. It sucks. Um, now, it wouldn't be so bad if it had like some sort of other way of tightening it. I hate the way you tighten it and loosen it. You just pull these straps together or push these, uh, you just pull these little um, nut knobs back and forth to either loosen it or tighten it, and I hate it. But there's one other thing too it's, it gets super dirty super fast. This is after like three days. I don't know if you can see it on a camera, but it's got a bunch of dirt on the sides from my hands, and I've I've only been using it for three days, so um, I hate I hate the strap. So yeah, this is going to be the first thing to go once I uh, once I get some mods. This will be the first thing to go. I like the plastic, honestly, I do. I hated the mesh on the Quest One, um, just because it's like this material, but not as bad, I guess. After a year of using it, it had a bunch of stains and stuff like that, so it's kind of to be expected. But with the plastic, you're not gonna get that. Plus, it's super easy to wipe down with like a cloth. If it does get like dirt on air or something, you can just easily wipe it down with a cleaning wipe, and then you're you're done basically. Um, the, the cameras are a lot smaller than the Quest One. I can already tell. Um, they're a lot smaller. Hold on, let me just get my Quest 1 for a comparison. So now I have both Quests. This is obviously, oh my god, even without the mod, it's still heavier than this feels. Uh, at least I feel like I can remember how much this weighed on my face. This is the Quest 1. This is the Quest 2. Now, obviously there's some significant size decrease in the Quest 2, which is absolutely great. It's about 10% lighter, which is about 70 grams. Uh, less than the Quest One. I'm not for sure their exact weight, but as you can see, I mean, you might not, you might not be able to tell, but the camera. <laughs> then this, and I, I know I've only had it for about a week. So what is up, guys? Make sure I'm recording. Welcome back to another video. Oh my God! What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing the cons and pros of the Quest Two, and kind of comparing it. Quest 1 right here and um, yeah there's obviously some big differences between the two and let's get right into it so as so as you can see the Quest 2 is a lot smaller than the Quest 1 by weight and in size like the dimensions are a lot smaller I don't know if you can see it from here but right here and like it's just a lot smaller and a lot lighter on this end right here this is a lot heavier even without the mod I know you guys might be saying well it's got the mod on but even without the mod, it's still heavier than this whole thing. Um, now, I do wish this did work on the Quest 2, but unfortunately, the sides are a lot smaller, so it does not fit. Uh, although, one of my friends did say they got it to work somehow with a Quest Halo strap. I got this from Alex VR. Not Alex VR. Uh, Go Quest, uh, Go Quest VR. But the uh, creator guy's name is Alex. Alexander VR, so, but uh, uh, you can try the BenQ1, you can try, you can try, if you have a Quest mod for Quest 1, uh, you can try to see if they work on here, but I don't know if they will, but, speaking of head straps, I do not, I do not hate it, per se, but, I just don't, I just don't entirely like it, like, as you can see right here, it's floppy, it's messy, it's, it's dirty, definitely dirty, I've only had this for about a week. I got it October 13th, and um, I'm regretting it. Not regretting the purchase, but I'm regretting the strap. I, I love I love this thing. I love this Quest 2. It's been fantastic. Almost in every website's comfort. I mean, 
I, I feel like it's a lot better, in my opinion, than the Quest 1 when it first originally came out. I didn't I didn't like the Quest 1 strap at all. It was like a rubber, um, it's like, like a hard rubber. It was so weird. And it wouldn't like grip my head just right. I have a, I have a big noggin and this pretty much cups it. I have to put it up a little bit higher because I do get some no nosebleed. And once you put it up a little bit higher, it does help a little bit. This does lift off your face. And like this, it's like tilts it almost, so you're gonna get some nosebleed. But if you're planning on getting a hail strap, that should be pretty much fixed. Now, Facebook, which is also the creator of this, which is a lot of people, which is why a lot of people have put this thing off, is it's because you have to have a Facebook account and you have to be signed in, and there's this whole new um, thing about um, Facebook uh, Facebook users getting banned. <laughs> Uh, only because I have to. I honestly I don't, I don't like using it, but I just go on the website and just scroll. Yes, that's the that's the that's the hack right there. You gotta you gotta stay active on Facebook, or else you will get banned. So uh, like once a week or so, I recommend just not even like you don't have to go through anything like pages or or anything. Just like scroll through your homepage or like just click on random things. And um, yeah, and you should be fine. That's one of the mistakes I made. I would create a Facebook account and leave it for six months at a time. Then I go back into it and it says, sorry, your Facebook account has been disabled due to inactivity or suspicious activity. And and you have to go through this whole process of sending your identif identification in, your, you know, all your information, a picture of yourself and all this, all this bull crap. So just be careful of that. And like I said, I recommend going on Facebook once a week, roughly, once two, two times a week. I go on it like once every couple of days, just to be safe. But I guess like do it at your own risk. I don't really know. Uh, so that's one of the major flaws of the thing. It's not really hardware or software or um, anything wrong with the device in general. It's the company that makes it. You know, it's owned by Facebook, and everybody. Just, Every, everybody that I spoke to either doesn't use it or they hate Facebook. Just flat out hate them, in which I do too, to be honest. Um, but unfortunately, there's no other competitor that can make these kind of devices for this cheap. And unfortunately, this is like the deal with the devil kind of scenario, um, I guess you could say. But... Uh, if, you, if you're able to look past that like I did, then this is a great headset and uh, for the value. So, one of the other things you may have noticed is that this does not have an IPD adjuster. Well, a slider. It technically does have an IPD, IPD adjuster. But it does not have the slider right here, like the bottom. I'll show you on my plus one. As you can see right here, it's got a slider which moves the lenses. Which as you can see, it moves the lenses. And um, what that, what that basically, what IPD means is the inner, in, um, let me try it again. What the IPD means is your inner pupillary distance, which is the distance between your eyes. And it's measured in millimeters. So if you're 68 millimeters or 63 millimeters or uh, 61 millimeters, you will be fine. <laughs> your thumb in between lenses ever so slightly you can, you can get even more of an IPD range uh, oculus recommends that if you have uh, like anywhere between like two two to 2.5 millimeters out of the uh, millimeters uh, that is built in here you should be fine so uh, I think the settings is like uh, 61 63 and 68 I believe I don't call me on it so if you're anywhere like between like 59 and 65 and 72 or 71 you should be fine uh now can go both ways you can be uh 68 or be at 66 you should be signing you should still be fine with 68 and one of the things i did notice though is i tried 60 uh 68 millimeters in here which is uh 73 
you do see a bit of the edges and that's for a very good reason well not necessarily a good reason but that's just for a very um that's just for one reason only this only has one display whereas a quest one has two displays which move individual individually um that's why they're able to have the ipd adjuster slider at the bottom because it's separating the screens and moving them closer or further away this has a single lcd panel and the only thing that's moving are the lenses themselves and the screens that are that you're looking at like the uh like the screen like the gameplay or whatever the menu whatever you're looking at is moving with it now this thing is a lot faster a lot smarter as far as competing wise and sometimes the graphics can be a huge upgrade sometimes they're barely, barely noticeable but with the uh with the increase of size of games you're going to want to pick up probably the, the 256 gigabyte version which is the version i did pick up because i have a lot of games in here I have about 70 games and I only filled up about half the storage. So if you're if you're a hardcore gamer and you buy a lot of games, get the 256 gigabyte. Now one of the pros, well a couple of the pros of this, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the specs right now. So a couple of the pros that this has over the Quest 1 is that it has a gigabyte, six gigabytes of RAM, which is two more than the Quest 1, which only had about four. This had a 50% a 50 more pixel density, so this 50% more pixels than the Quest 1. It's almost 4K resolution, which is almost 2K per eye. I forget what the exact resolution is, but for the uh, Quest 1, it's 1440 by 1600, so it's a lot more higher resolution. <laughs> This thing has the capability of going up to 90 hertz and there's a way to unlock it which steve knows did post a video i also did post i think i posted a video no i didn't didn't do a video yet i will be doing a video on how to do it very shortly hopefully um but i will link a video to steve knows channel steve knows channel uh where you can unlock the 90 hertz which you will need a computer to install side quest unless you're able to like run APK side loader through or a, uh, a ADB a side loader through your phone, which I'm pretty sure you can do. Um, I um, the myst the mystical has a video I believe on it. Uh, go check out his channel. Uh, he does have a video on how to get um, ADB or APK side loaders on your phone, which is what you're going to need for this to unlock the 90 hertz. Now there's 90 hertz native, but only for the main menu. So as of right now, it's locked for games, but the first game, well, there's a couple of games that are for sure being updated to 90 hertz, which is uh, super hot, and a few others I can't remember. But this thing is rocking the XR2 chip, which the Quest 1 is only rocking the Snapdragon 835, which is about four years old, three, four years old now, and this is the cutting edge XR2 processor. Um, it has, like I said, 256 gigabytes of storage, or you can get the 64 gigabyte tier, which is $100 cheaper. Um, a gigabyte's RAM, 50% 50, 50 more pixel density and higher resolution, higher refresh rate, all around better specs. Um, now, one thing I did notice, it's not a, a deal breaker at all. Don't don't confuse that. It's not a deal breaker. The blacks, I actually could prefer, I kind of prefer the LCD screen over the Quest 1. And this, that's because the Quest Two's blacks are on the lighter side, like this kind of gray right here. Whereas the Quest ones are like uh, are 100% black. But in, in some games like The Walking Dead, I prefer the LCD screen on this just because it gives them more of a, a spooky, kind of foggy uh, representation of the game, and uh, I really I really enjoy it. Whereas the Quest One, it's just 100% black. Now sometimes. Now let's talk about FOV. FOV is your field of view, which is how much you can see inside the headset. And they're but basically the same. The lenses are basically the same. They're still really good lenses. The FOV, if you've ever owned a Quest 1 or tried a Quest 1, it's basically the same as this. Um, there's really no difference at all. 
Now, you might get a little more field of view because the lenses are, are a little bit closer to your eyes because as you can see, they're more engraved. <laughs> This is all mesh right here on the Quest One, so you might get a little more field of view of that. But if you have any prescription lenses, they for Quest One, they will work for your Quest Two. That's already been proven by a bunch of YouTubers. I don't have prescription lenses to try that out. So, so the one thing I do prefer over the Quest Two, I mean Quest One, is their Quest Two's Oculus controllers. Now these things are fantastic. Now I got ones for the opposite hand for no, both for the same hand. So these are both left-handed controllers. But this one is a lot, this one feels like my hands a lot better. And this one, it just feels kind of empty. I mean, they worked fantastic before, and I, I just felt like they were a little bit small in my hands. But uh, these ones, there's no, there's no room. I mean, there's no room between my hand and the Quest controller. I have big hands, so um, just be wary if you have brother, if you have pretty small hands. They might not fit as well. But these work fantastic for me. I like how wide it is, and this does have a finger sensitive, like it, like I don't know if you can see it, but like right here, this little spot right here, uh, it is, does have like finger sensi sensing sensors. I don't know what you'd call them. Like when I would go in the home screen, you could see my thumb pressing down on this, so that does indicate that it does have some sort of touch sensitivity. It's also a good place to rest your thumb if you're playing hardcore games like Echo Arena. Or one of the things I noticed is this is particularly useful for is when I, is when I'm in a game, the I would tend to press the home button a lot. And if I have my thumb resting right here, as you can see, it's on the complete other side. So it's a it's a huge plus for me because if I'm playing Beat Saber, I'd always press the the, the home button and it would just be all bad like super bad. One thing they did fix is the magnetic door, which means that you no know, more sliding. I've played The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I've played a bunch of multiplayer Beat Saber. I've played all the games that have been updated for the Quest 1, I mean for the Quest 2, and I have not even had any issues with this. I'm still extremely impressed with the battery quality. It is still at 100%, even after a week of use, continuously every day for at least two hours it's it's just it, that's just insane so if you're short on batteries these do come with two batteries and i have not changed them since i bought these so these are quality batteries they just come with the gold plated batteries um, i don't know who they're from i'm pretty sure they're just regular standard batteries one thing i did notice is that the grip and the trigger are <laughs> More springier, I guess. I don't know. This one's a little more springy, like it would, uh, like it's got more resistance. This one is a lot thicker, a lot wider, as you can see, a little bit wider. And this one, but there's really no resist. I mean, there's resistance to make it feel realistic, like when you're shooting a gun. Pretty much the same interface on the Quest 2 controllers as it will Quest 1. If you're familiar with X, Y, and, and A, B, um, they say the buttons are on the same sides, except for the home buttons. They're more on the side. This is more of the middle. I love the way these, these are made. Um, now, this does feel like I, I have the, the Quest 1 straps. They, they still kind of fit. Um, they don't fit perfectly, but they do fit. I just prefer not to keep them on because it just feels weird. Um, not having a perfect fit, so I just keep these off. But I did notice that once I had my Quest One, the onboard grip, like the ones that cut, like the one that came on the side of the controller, is a little bit more grippier, grippier than the Quest Two. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing just yet. Now let's talk about tracking. The tracking, I did. I don't know if this is just uh, a malfunction or. Uh, something I did, but I know you guys are gonna lie, going to be like, why would you do this? You're not supposed to do this outside. Well, I did play that side, but I was 100% in the shade. Um, it was very cloudy out. It was there was no sun in the sky. It was getting close to 6 p.m. 
so I made sure that I was in perfectly good conditions. And at least the left chat the left controller was fine, it worked great, but the right one was having a bit of an issue, I guess. I don't know. It was just be, it would go in six degrees of freedom. While this one was in I'm sorry, vice versa. This one would be in three degrees of freedom and this one would be six degrees of freedom. I don't know what the deal was, but I rebooted it and it still didn't work, so I went inside. But the tracking for inside works a lot better in my opinion. A lot less uh, controller drifting, a lot less just all around it's better a better tracking in my opinion. Now some people would say due to these smaller cameras their tracking was worse but that wasn't the case for me. It was a lot better. It was actually great in my opinion. I, I was able to use this in extra plus mode on Beat Saber with a bunch of uh, with a bunch of friends uh, play community battle ghosts with ghost notes and extra plus and my own <laughs>